It's hard to believe that only six weeks ago, we gathered for worship on Ash Wednesday, reminding ourselves with believers around the world that we are but dust. The ashes were a clear picture of the frailty of human existence. And though many times we may somehow think we're invincible in this life, or even led to believe that we're not needy of a savior, when we are hit with like struggles and painful events, like the health crisis that swept over our world, we quickly remember we need help. We need a savior. Praise be to the Lord that we do have one. As we walk through the journey of Holy Week, Jesus' passion story reminds us that we are the redeemed people. We are set free. We have been given new life through Jesus Christ. Jesus, our Savior, was broken in ways we can never fully comprehend. Yet he remained strong and chose to endure it all for us. Jesus offers us his grace to remind us that we don't have to stay stuck in our struggle and pain. He makes all things work together for good, bringing greater purpose, greater beauty, and greater strength. He never intends for us to remain in despair. He breathes fresh life into our dry bones. God brought beauty out of the brokenness of the cross, and he gives beauty for us out of our ashes. His sacrifice offers forgiveness for our sin. The power of the resurrection gives us hope for our future. God sent his only son. He loved, he gave. There was no other way but this. This Good Friday, we step back through the scriptures and through familiar hymns and gather to focus on what Jesus endured for each of us on the wondrous cross. The nails, the spear, the crown of thorns, the sour wine, the ridiculed king of the Jews. His body was broken for us. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hid their faces, he was despised. And we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet he considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all.
sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this,
Pray with me. Holy and mighty God, we remember today the pain and suffering of the cross and all that Jesus was willing to endure so that we could be set free. He paid the price to offer us the gift of eternal life. Help us never to take for granted this huge gift of love on our behalf. Help us to be reminded of the cost of it all. Forgive us for being too busy or distracted by the things of this world, for not fully recognizing what you've freely given, what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, that by your wounds we are healed. Thank you that because of your huge sacrifice, we can live free. Thank you that sin and death have been conquered and that your power is everlasting. Thank you for the hope we have in you that even when we don't have the answers to the many questions surrounding our world at this time, you offer us unending peace, hope, joy, and love beyond measure. Help us to focus on you and remember your sacrifice on the cross. Help us to be a resurrection people who live every day to celebrate your great gift and share it with the world. In Jesus' name, amen.